70 million euros plus 5 million in add-ons has been agreed between Atalanta and Manchester United. Rasmus Hoilun is done and dusted. Now who is next? I've got an answer for you. Welcome to the hot spot. My name is Webb. It's a Sunday afternoon and obviously a good time for us to be here talking Manchester United. Let's quickly get proper into it now after the signing of rasmus hoilund now the focus of manchester united is fully on signing a backup for casemiro and sofian amrabat is that player that united are seriously linked with now it has been confirmed that united are now focusing on ensuring that the fiorentina 26 year old moroccan midfielder a semi-finalist in the world cup does join manchester united by next week Yes, the plan is next week and that is where United is putting all their focus right now. I told you that before Rasmus Hoilun, Eric Ten Hag himself was leading talks on call, on video call, on first time, name it, and indeed it yielded the results. Now United are probably going to use the same strategy. After all, they know that the player, Sofian Amrabat, has already agreed personal terms with them and he also wants Manchester United. So. There is not uh, so much uh, back and forth that is expected between Manchester United and Fiorentina over Sofian Amrabat, an important player for Eric Ten Hag because he knows how much he will improve his midfield in terms of depth but also in terms of balance uh, as uh, he does come out to post Casemiro who has been the out and out holding midfielder for the club. So that is where... Manchester United is going to be focusing on now. It is known that uh, Fiorentina value uh, Sofian Amrabat at about 30 to, to 35 million pounds, but United should be able to talk them down to about 25 million pounds. That's the expectation. Uh, maybe add uh, plus some add ons in there because these days add ons are so important. Like they have always been in football, if you're going to see a deal for a player, you want so much. So there is a belief that uh, United uh, will be surely going head to head uh, with. Uh, in a team that would be interested in Sofia and Amrabat, but with the confidence of them being ahead because Amrabat is believed to have turned down even Liverpool uh, in recent weeks. So the focus and belief is there uh, that Manchester United will seal Sofia and Amrabat as well before the end of next week. Remember, for Rasmus Hoilun, uh, he's going to be unveiled uh, by next week. It should be happening. Remember, United still have got a game to play, a, a pre-season tour game against Borussia Dortmund on Monday. That is another important game that Manchester United uh, is uh, focused on. But at least with uh, uh, Rasmus Hoylund done and uh, now knowing uh, who next they want to go for, uh, there is proper belief that uh, I think it is beginning to come down and look good uh, for Eric Ten Hag and his uh, team at uh, Manchester United. Now, uh, still talking transfers, now we know that uh, we have not yet concluded on the goalkeeping situation. We know that we've got Andre Onana in, but his backup is still a confusion. There is lots of speculations uh, concerning the backup for uh, for Andre Onana. There was talk of Zion Suzuki, uh, who Manchester United is, was willing to meet his buyout clause by him for about uh, close to £6 million. Pounds. But according to reports that came through from uh, 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 Japan, uh, where the youngster comes from, apparently he's uh, not interested in joining Manchester United yet because he's focusing on being uh, the starting goalkeeper uh, for, 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 for Japan in the upcoming Olympics in Paris. Now these are reports that came through. I uh, remember Paris 2024 is just around the corner and uh, he's uh, he's certainly not sure, not guaranteed a starting place if he's not getting playing time. So apparently Zion Suzuki would rather focus on getting a playing time with the Urawa Red Diamonds before thinking of moving because playing time would guarantee him a place in the Olympics as a starting goalkeeper. Uh, so apparently that's the confusion and that is why this his move has been stalling because Eric Ten Hag before had the plan to sort position per position. So sign Andre Onana, get Zion Suzuki and that is done. Move to a striker, Sign Rasmus Hoilun. There is also talk, by the way, by some people that United could be going for a second striker like Eric Ten Hag has always wanted, but it is not uh, clear yet. I think uh, for now they will pause the striking. Uh, talk for a bit and focus on other departments by going back to uh, Zion Suzuki so there is that uh, bit of you know confusion around him and that is why he has been silent lately whereas it is known that United could easily uh, sign him uh, it is uh, believed that uh, there is a bit of you know a stall uh, th that is coming through and that is uh, the reports that are coming through from Japan suggest that the player wants to be guaranteed playing time so that he can compete uh, for a place as the number one for Japan in the Olympics. We've been linked to uh, Altei uh, Bayindil, that is the goalkeeper of, uh, of uh, Fanabach. 
as well uh, so the goalkeeping talk is not done because even Dean Henderson's situation is not clear yet whether he's going to join Nottingham Forest who want him the board passed uh, you know the budget for him to be bought for about 20 million pounds for Manchester United but he's still training with United perhaps that's because we have not got exactly uh, who we are uh, the right player who is going to be uh, coming in as the number two so maybe uh, Eric Ten Hag might be thinking of perhaps keeping uh, Dean Henderson around or maybe he could have been impressed by Dean Henderson uh, uh, you know but that's where uh, we are uh, united are still uh, not done with the goalkeeping department now away from sophie and amrabat uh, the zion suzuki uh, also the the center back position is one that united has wanted to boost now as uh, uh, axo disasi is the player with whom united has had talks they have been positive in fact it is believed that like many players united eventually signs personal terms have been agreed as well with axo disasi but uh, his uh, joining of united will depend a lot on which defenders leave and remember uh harry maguire is one of those defenders who are wanted out is on the market and it is believed united could be cashing in on him we could be getting some few pounds for him now if that happens then the chances of us signing axel disassi in this summer will be high uh, so that's where we are. So the Axel Disasi situation, again, is uh, one we are just monitoring. Remember, Newcastle United are interested in him. United do not feel like he's a top priority. It is always good for uh, uh, players to be signed in priority, uh, you know, based on priorities. You've got to prioritize who you want to sign first. Otherwise, if you don't have a proper plan of how you want to bring them in, it can eat you. You will be messed up. So uh, the plan for Manchester United uh, is to sign Axel Disasi after sorting the striker, which is nearly done if United are not thinking of getting a second one but also a backup for Casemiro and then we will think of Axel de Sassi if there is money uh, for us to proceed. If not, uh, we could stick with the players we have including Harry Maguire and uh, we will plan perhaps for that backup later on uh, maybe in January a, cen a centre back, uh, you know option might be uh, another uh, one to think about maybe in January and later on. But for now, Axel Di Sassi is that player. He's a Monaco player. He's experienced. He can play centre-back and right-back. He's once Manchester United as well. Whereas Newcastle is interested in him, he has clearly uh, ma uh, made it known to them that he wants Manchester United. No wonder he has agreed personal terms. He's valued at about 40 million or less. Uh, they're about between 30 and 40 million pounds. That's what United can cough uh, to get him from Monaco. He's a friend international he has won cups uh, with france he's, he's played at the world cup so he has got a, a, a decent profile and uh, obviously uh, he fits well into what eric ten Hag is trying to build but uh, uh, for now that's where united is we've got to sell some center backs if he's going to come in but also we are advancing in terms of sales of other players fred going to galatasaray and, and, and snubbing lazio whereas uh, donny van de Beek could be joining uh, uh, we also said that already we've, we've sold Anthony Elanga uh, to uh, Nottingham Forest. He has had his first interview there. So there is progress in terms of the selling. So most of these players will be linked with uh, a possibility because the money is beginning to come in. So United is not in woods it is clearly out of the woods there is no pressure for now i think we can focus well on the football we see properly that uh, eric ten Hag is improving the football department of the club which is the most important department of a football club we're a football club football is the most important department it's what we sell well eric ten Hag is coming in there and he has had the confidence to change things around and improve things uh, properly and you want to give him a lot of credit for doing that now uh, I, I was listening to Eric Ten Hag's pre-match press conference before that game against Borussia Dortmund and he was uh, clear uh, saying, you know, uh, he thinks that uh, we have now built the foundation uh, for Manchester United to perform and uh, he's looking for the, the right players to fit into it. Of course, he has got most of them and he does have a lot of belief in what he has built and what uh, Manchester United is going to is about to look like according to uh, to him and uh, for me that gave me more confidence in what in, in what he's doing because if the manager is believing what he's doing he feels the players are getting there you can see that he talks with confidence uh, you know every time he's speaking about these players he's talking with a lot of confidence about uh, what he's doing but also feels like uh, things are progressing it looks like things are looking good i actually saw jadon sancho beginning to feel, to look happy at manchester united more expressive even in training so you feel like uh, 
where we are headed uh, seems to be positive. I think for me, uh, that's a very important thing because if the players do not enjoy what they are doing with you, uh, like you know, we saw with most of the past managers that came after Sir Alex Ferguson, players were not happy. Under uh, uh, under Louis Van Gaal, players were not happy. You clearly see it. Under Jose Mourinho, Marcus Rashford was talking about him and how. He restricted them so much because these are young players who are quite expressive. If you re restrict them a lot, certainly they won't enjoy their football. He didn't feel, you know, you know, happy and expressive there. I, so you feel Eric Ten Hag has won over the players, and for me, that's why uh, United are being more expressive. By the day we look impressive, I think you need to watch this game against Borussia Dortmund. We shall, we shall have a watch along uh, that game that will be happening tomorrow at four. Uh, but. You feel that's an important bit that has been lacking in this whole Manchester United project post Sir Alex Ferguson. And when we got that, even Terry Hag saying himself that uh, the foundation is now there, just getting right players to fit in into it. And I've been telling you that here, the foundation was clear from that game against Arsenal. From all the games we've played, you would clearly see what we are doing, how we are want to play in transition, how we want to build. So for Eric Ten Hag, I think, and what he's doing, there's a lot of posi uh, positivity and uh, there's a lot of belief in what whatever is building and the players are happy are uh, seeing how it is all going and for me that's the most important thing if we are going to come out there and shine so for now uh, it's looking good. Uh, Rasmus Hoilund uh, is in. Sofian Amrabat is coming in. Maybe Axel de Sassi could join. Maybe a goalkeeper would come in as a backup for Andre Onana. And what a summer Manchester United will have had. Because I don't remember one single summer where we signed so many important players in key positions. I think as Manchester United. We always struggle to get in players in the summer. It's historic. It's something that has been eating us for the longest time. But Eric Ten Hag is switching things around. And Manchester United United is doing big business in the summer transfer window. Guys, Manchester United versus Borussia Dortmund is the next preseason game, the last in the US. Uh, it will be played in Las Vegas. Guys, go on and uh, follow that one. I'm telling you, we are going to be here for a watch along of that game. It will be exciting as it comes. We will be here to see how it all goes. We do believe uh, that uh, Rasmus Hoylun is in the UK as we speak now. He's not going to be playing that game, obviously. But it won't be long after tomorrow that he will be unveiled officially as a Manchester United player because as we speak paperwork and documentation are being done and finalized so United are making moves we are progressing things are happening and trust you me Manchester City is on red alert is under red alert because they see what we are doing and certainly it is worrying them for Arsenal certainly they have got a lot to do they bought their Declan Rice but clearly we took him to footballing school. We, to we showed them why they were ripped off. Uh, but anyhow, Arsenal is not for us to talk about here as Manchester United supporter. Now, one final thing, guys. Rasmus Hoylun's shirt number is still a subject of debate. I'll leave it to you. Which shirt number do you think the youngster, the promising, the new boy, the loved one, the favoured one, the man we've always been waiting for, what shirt number do you think should Rasmus Hoylun be given? There is, uh, of course, people talk of shirt 99. I, I actually think uh, the ruthless Eric Ten Hag, if he doesn't have Anthony Marshall along uh, in his plans, he can have the confidence to strip him of shirt number 9 and give it to Rasmus Hoylun. Because, I mean, we are, we are living in a new era. I think uh, Anthony Marshall is never going to do justice to shirt number 9. He's, he, he will be lucky to even stay in this window. So for me, give the boy the shirt number. Give him the shirt number nine and let him boss it. I mean, Anthony Marshall, we love him. We respect him. But he has enjoyed shirt number nine enough, but uh, he hasn't done proper justice to it. Give it to a proper number nine in Rasmus Hoylun. Or people have been talking of shirt number 20, and uh, that's uh, uh, the other number that could be probably uh, an option for him. But for me, I think we need to give him a proper shirt number nine, and then we build with him knowing that he's the future of that position because that is what you want to do. We are in a rebuilding phase and it's looking good, not so much time needed for us to get there. Start giving people the, the right shirt numbers for the right position. So for me, a shirt number nine stripping, uh, stripping Anthony Marshall and giving it to, uh, to, to Rasmus Hoylund wouldn't be the best thing. But let me know what you think. My name is Webb. Uh, this is the hot spot, a Sunday edition. So these two, I told you, they would be coming in quick succession. And it looks like this 
is happening. Quick succession. We've got Rasma Soilun and Sofiam Amrabat is now joining next. By next week, it will be done. My name is Webb. Hotspot. Subscribe. I'll catch you later. Enjoy your weekend.